करुणाम करुणा तरंगताक्षी धृत पाशांगुष पुष्पाण चापिरावृता मयूख अहम विभावये भवानी नमस्ते सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू शिफ्ट गियर्स अगेन एंड मूविंग ऑन फ्रॉम द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ कुंडलिनी वी विल गो इनटू अ सीरीज ऑफ सेवरल नामस दैट डिस्क्राइब हर ब्लेसिंग्स टू हर डिवोटीज and of course this is of interest to all of us because that's why we do our sadhana isn't it we want these blessings these extraordinary blessings that come from the universal mother and her care for her devotees nama 112 bhavani beginning from this nama till nama 131 The significant aspect of blessing her devotees is described. Bhava means Shiva, particularly his form of Mahadev, and Anna means infusing life. She, the wife of Shiva, gives life to all. Or as Shri Mata, she gives life. Since she gave back life to Manmata, Manmata is also known as Bhava. She is addressed as Bhavani. Shiva is known as Bhava because the universe was created from him. Bhava means produced from and being sustained by him. Though grammatically Bhava and Bhavani may differ, the actions of both Bhava and Bhavani remain the same. So Shiva is the actual source. He is the powerful, the original being, Brahman. And Bhavani is the power. Uh, she gives life. Bhava also means becoming. So she is becoming. She is time, space, matter, spirit, energy. Huh? She is all the ingredients needed for becoming and manifesting the universe. So she is therefore known as the universal mother, Bhavani. And this is a very beloved name of the goddess in all the Shakti traditions. In fact, I have a friend in Nepal named Bhavani. So This name has been coming down through many many generations many thousands of years of devotion to the goddess and it just shows really what a close connection there is between her and her devotees this is a special relationship it's not for everyone it's only for those who actually have deep love for her so let's try to look for this name in fact it happens right at the end of the shloka that that opens this video like this bhavani so this is a very special name and we should be very cognizant of her in this aspect the famous shloka saundarya lahari 22 says bhavani tvam You are Bhavani. The shloka further says, when one is desirous of praying to you, O Bhava's consort, may you cast your gracious glance on me. Your servant utters the name of Bhava's consort, Bhavani. You grant him the state of absorption in you at that very moment. Absorption means the mental state that is completely filled with God consciousness. Individual consciousness submerged in God consciousness is absorption. The word bhavani is used in the above shloka is intended by the devotee as an address to Lalitambika 
in the vocative case. But as a verb in the first person of the imperative mood, it could also mean, let me become. So this illustrates the close relationship between the goddess, Shakti, and the process of becoming. Huh? Of course, we've gone over the process of becoming in many, many earlier videos, and I'm sure we'll reference it many times more. But basically, the process of becoming means moving from potential into manifestation. So we all have, as, as part of God, we all have the energy of creation. We all have the power of creativity. But what we do with that power determines whether we enjoy or suffer. If our becoming moves us farther away from God, then we suffer. But if it moves us closer to God, then we enjoy. And I mean, really, there's no way I can describe the beautiful relationship with Bhavani, uh, the inner relationship. It's not some external religious ritual. Of course, chanting her names and her mantras helps to invoke her presence within. But once that connection is established, oh, then it can grow in any number of wonderful dimensions. So Bhava and Bhavani, Shiva and Shakti, the powerful and the power. As soon as the first two words, Bhavani Tvang, are uttered, she rushes to grant him absorption in her own self. She becomes so elated and happy of being addressed as Bhava's consort. She does not even wait for the shloka to be completed. She acts immediately on hearing Bhavani Tvang, interpreting them as let me become thyself. This translates into the Mahavakya, tat tvam asi. This process gives immediate liberation and is called sayujya. This way of contemplating her is more efficacious than japa and homa. So we have to see that as the embodiment of the 36 tattvas, which we discussed back in the Lakshmi Tantra series, Bhavani actually is everything that we could possibly identify as our self. This is the deep meaning of let me become you. Uh, Bhavani Tvang. Let me submerge my so-called individual self in your universal self. And of course, this is the source of tremendous auspiciousness and leads to liberation, not in a long time, but in a very short time, immediately, as the text says. Well, why is this? Because as soon as we recognize that she is our very self, then there is no difference between her and us. She is everything, including consciousness. In fact, that is her primary identification. So even our consciousness, the four states of consciousness, huh? waking, dreaming, deep sleep, and the fourth, Turiya, are actually her. And she is actually identified more with Turiya, and the others are simply branches of that fundamental tree of consciousness. Liberation is of five types. Sayuja, absorption into the Lord himself. Salokya, coexistence with the Lord in his world. Sarupya, attaining the same form as that of the Lord. Samipya, proximity to the Lord. And Sarshti, to possess the same opulences as the Lord. These opulences are described as fame, beauty, wealth, power, knowledge, and renunciation. The first one progressively leads to the last one. But the thought process of identifying the self as the Lord, Sayujya, leads to fast-track emancipation. 
In reality, nothing exists but Brahman. Everything else is Maya. Therefore, the concept of Sayuja simply recognizes this ever-existing truth. This realization is prerequisite to any of the higher forms of liberation. So not only tat twamasi, also ahang brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Huh? There's no difference. Because what are we in the ultimate analysis but consciousness? And consciousness is Brahman. It's absolute. It doesn't depend on anything else. Indeed, everything else depends on consciousness. Without consciousness, we wouldn't even know that we exist. <laughs> what to speak of the world around us? So consciousness is fundamental. Consciousness is absolute. It is the absolute, Brahman. And really, this is our eternal and fundamental identity. Most explanations of liberation get this backwards. There is a common bias or misconception that Sayuja Mukti is the highest, when actually it is merely the prerequisite for the other types of liberation. Nor do most teachings mention Sarshti Mukti. These teachings are limited and incomplete. Consider, for example, the many Shaktis of Sri Chakra. In one sense, they are simply Angas or expansions of Lalita, but they are also individuals, devotees displaying the symptoms of all five types of liberation. While the other Shaktis certainly realize their oneness with Lalitambikai, they also retain their individuality and are capable of independent action in her service. So this is very hard for the Western mind to grasp. It's called the philosophy of Achintya Bheda Bheda. Huh? That God and the individual soul are simultaneously, inconceivably, one and different. They are one because, like we talked about in the last slide, Brahman is the absolute. Brahman is the root of everything. Brahman is the universal consciousness, and which is also the self, our self. <laughs> so in that way, we're one with the absolute. But at the same time, in the consciousness stages of Sushupti and Svapna and Jagrat, we're different. We're individual. We have our own separate identity. So what's hard to understand about this? This is all going on simultaneously. All four states of consciousness. All these different states of oneness and difference are all going on simultaneously. And we simply shift the center of gravity of our awareness from one to the other. And that is our experience. And if we observe our experience very carefully with knowledge of these categories, we can actually see this for ourselves. This is yoga. So when we practice yoga, the goal is to recognize these states of consciousness, recognize these states of beingness, and see how actually we are becoming every moment. And this can lead very quickly to the highest state of complete enlightenment. Om Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.